Now, five people have died in a suicide attack on a US base in Afghanistan. The Taliban fighters set off bombs and fired rockets outside the airfield in the eastern city of Jalalabad. A NATO spokesman said three Afghan soldiers and two civilians were killed. Taliban guerrillas tried to get into the base during a two-hour battle, but were pushed back. Now, in two years' time, all British troops are due to be out of Afghanistan. But as we've heard, the war is raging on, and many within the army feel it's going largely unnoticed by the British public. Well, during their latest tour in Helmand, filmmaker Vaughan Smith accompanied a unit of the Grenadier Guards, which he used to be part of, for a look at their life on the front line. And he found that after 11 years of war in Afghanistan, very little has changed in what's now being called a forgotten war. In the sweltering Helmand heat, Captain Oliver Holcroft is preparing the most difficult of announcements for his troops. The men are told to gather. It is with great sorrow and regret that I have to inform you once again that the company has been subject to a cruel twist of fate. Lance Corporal Groom has tragically been killed as a result of his wounds from an IED strike onto his jackal that he was commanding yesterday evening. Lance Corporal Groom was without doubt the most professional of soldiers within the company. He was an honest, affable and exceptionally reliable soldier. He had an extremely promising career ahead of him. Our thoughts and prayers are with his family and friends at this particularly difficult time. Gone, but never forgotten. As difficult a pill as it is to swallow, like I said the other day, only a few days ago with Garth and Whittle, there will be a time for mourning. But it's so important that you harness the resolve now that we're still out here to push on to the finish tape, i.e. back in for price. Don't be distracted, keep focused, and let's uh, try and avoid anything like this again. These soldiers are from the Queen's Company of the Grenadier Guards, nearing the end of a brutal six-month tour. The man they have lost is a friend and a colleague. Fighting alongside them just a few days ago, he was killed while attached to another unit. This is the first time they've heard. For all of them, it's a devastating shock. For some in particular, it's almost too much. Look after him, make sure he's okay. Yeah. Good lad. For a while, the mood is understandably somber at this small base. It takes time for the news to sink in. A senior colleague supports the commander of 3 Platoon, Lieutenant Alexander Budge. This is the third man he has lost on this tour. Um, main issue for us is that... Budgie, as he's known in the company, gives his next briefing. Move the route up to us. But everyone's minds still seem to be elsewhere. Um, right. Within the hour, though, they are forced to refocus. Taliban are spotted. Has he got some protruding from his, his right, right shoulder. shoulder? A grenade is fired towards the base. Exchanges of fire here are normally short and regular, but fighting an insurgency can be drawn out. The grenadiers are in Helmand for a third time in six years. For the soldier on the ground, little has changed. But many of the men told me that they feel their fighting this summer has gone unnoticed by the public at home. The Queen's Company had begun their operation here several days earlier. They arrived early in the morning, having been ordered to set up a temporary base in this compound where a large Afghan family were living. The family had to leave their home for a few days. They were paid $300 in compensation. They had a two-day-old baby. 
as the family packs up the Grenadiers' setup. Their mission is to support a larger operation by preventing the Taliban from passing through this area. Slowly, the family home becomes a military base. After the family leaves, the platoon goes out on patrol Okay, let's go. To stop insurgent movement, the men must regularly scout the green zone, a particularly fertile strip of Helmand province. The high crops make this dangerous insurgent territory. These men are at the sharp end. They have been aggressively taking the insurgents on like this for six months now. Okay, into that, follow on, let's get into that. And it's taking a high toll. Three platoon have suffered three deaths and 12 injuries out of the 29 men who began the six month tour. It's been you know, it's just the fact that people get killed and stuff. No, our friend, we lost a couple of friends and that. Well, it's our job at the end of the day, we have to carry on doing it, so. Well, apart from that, just doing our job. Bring them right in here, don't do it out on the road, bring them right in here. The platoon regularly encounter local villagers on their patrols. Civilians are allowed in and out of the area the men are controlling. But they are subjected to thorough body searches to check for weapons. It's not a trusting relationship. Here, attacks can come at any time. Let's go now. On the way back to base, the platoon are shot at. They respond in kind. Um, so south, east, right in the village over. After several months, the men have got used to this type of fighting. Uh, it's a weird feeling, to be honest. It's like you're scared, but nothing stops you from doing your job. Where do you think that's coming from? And sometimes you're even laughing in between. If someone falls over during a contact, that's even more funnier than if there wasn't any contact. Out. Uh, zero, one, three, we've got a dicker. Make sure you get in the low ground, OK? We've got sentries on top giving you cover. After several minutes, the insurgents stop firing. The men are able to continue their patrol. How many rounds do you get off, then? The platoon seems battle-weary. Some of the men admitted they weren't expecting such a tough fight. They're not stupid. <laughs> they know what they're doing. <laughs> Massively underestimated them before this tour. They're not just um, guys cutting around the desert in mm. dish dashes with AKs. They're very well organised. I've got tremendous amounts of respect for them now. Yeah. In a sense, I mean, they still <laughs> feels probably just as much as us. Yeah. So, I don't know, they've just got a little bit more drive, I suppose. Their religion drives them, whereas, I don't know, I don't know what drives me. Probably my friends and getting home to my family and things like that. Most ordinary soldiers tell me they are fighting out of loyalty to their comrades rather than any convincing wider purpose. Many feel disconnected from a public back home, which seems to have become disinterested in a long-running, faraway war.